Hi everyone, welcome back to Brookdale Farm. Well, it's a beautiful sunny day and our oats are all growing nicely. So is the ryegrass and a few other weeds. We're just about, we've got the sprayer parked up there in the paddock and we're about to spray the ryegrass out now. Um, it's also a little bit dry, but we've got some more rain forecast this weekend, but it is getting quite dry again. I just thought while I was out in this paddock, I would show you what happens when you use too much chemical. Now, we've got this bare patch down through the middle of the paddock here that sort of stakes its way back up there. This is where I blew a hose on the sprayer, I think three years ago. Um, and the chemical here went out at probably a hundred times the rate that it should have gone out. And nothing grows here. Now there's a cup, oh, if we wander back this way, you can see very clearly the line between where I was turning with the cedar. Um, and So this got seeded two or three times um, and then nothing. So there's a very definite line there. Now, a couple of things happen in places like this. There is probably still some residual chemical in the soil that is uh, stopping or inhibiting growth, uh, although most of that should have disappeared by now. The other thing is that the chemical kills all your soil microbia and fungus and things like that pretty effectively especially when you go out at such a high rate as this. Now, once your, your soil microbia has died, and because there is nothing growing here at all, you get absolutely bare soil with no shading or anything like that. Everywhere else on the paddock, we've got a little tiny bit of stubble left, but we've also got things growing. Um, and this keeps the UV light and the heat off your direct soil. Now this was bare over summer and we had a particularly hot summer which isn't going to have helped because this would have taken the full brunt of the sun whereas that still had stubble that was reflecting some of the heat. Um, the other thing is that your soil microbia need something to eat. They break down all this straw for us into um, good nutrients for our soil. Um, and if there is nothing growing here, there is nothing to encourage the microbes back into this area. Um, so anywhere that it has had a little bit more mulch on it, um, if we walk up here a tiny bit. So it was a pretty thin crop last year, but there was a little bit of a header trail that comes through here. And you can see there's a little bit of stuff coming up where the header trail was. This is oats, this is what I've planted, but the um, new, the um, carbon and uh, stubble from the header trail has just helped the microbes to come back a little bit um, and also helped just to shade the ground and things like that. So this is what happens when we use way too much chemical. It's generally not a problem when you're spraying uh, and everything's going well. Sometimes on your corners or where you've slowed down or where you've started and stopped, it can be a bit of an issue. Uh, but the biggest thing to keep in mind uh, when, you're, when you're doing any sort of spraying is if you've got a bit of chemical left over or something like that, be mindful about where you dump it. Don't dump it in your paddock because you're gonna ruin that bit of soil for the next few years. Dump it on your fire break or somewhere like that that you want uh, bare ground, um, and that will just help, uh, that, I mean, that'll help your fire break. It means you won't have to spray that bit of your fire break again, but it means you're not killing off valuable parts of your paddock. Anyway, I better get back in the Land Rover and get spraying. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this little video. Thanks very much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.